welcome back great challenge uh, welcome back to my channel this is another one of those Etsy upcoming on Etsy uh, video I want to share with you some of the items I'm going to put up on Etsy probably the same day you're going to see this video so if you see anything you really really want grab it now because <laughs> last time I did a video and posted everything at the same time I got oodles of questions is this still available what happened to this did you post it yet hey, they were gone <laughs> they were gone the same day so I have a lot of stuff I'm not gonna be spending a huge amount of time on each one of them but there's a rationale as to why I want to show you these items because sometimes pictures just don't do it justice like for instance pottery in particular the glaze and the work of the pottery itself of the pottery piece I find to be very difficult to gauge um, in photograph but if you see it moving you really do get a feel for it not only just the size but just the overall feel for the particular piece so without further ado I'm going to start some of the items you're going to see today were sourced from uh, various thrift shops in my area this is how I supply my Etsy shop I go to thrift stores I make sure that I get the best deal whatsoever for a particular item and then I put it up on my Etsy and I'm always trying my very best to get you a really good price on them I compare prices with other sellers I go online I do some research and some items that I've sold for very very underpriced uh, marking um, for a reason because that's just who I am um, anyway let's get started I was talking about pottery so I'm going to talk about these two bowls first and I know a lot of you want to try um, to do a Etsy shop as well and you're not sure how to do uh, the management itself this is basically what I do every item is numbered and has a particular code and the code is technically um, something that's unique to each item for instance this item is number 614 in my database it's 2EAPB which means 2 earth um, art pottery bowl <laughs> <laughs> so I remember those uh, but it's all catalog and everything that's the only way otherwise you just like you end up shipping the wrong thing which happened to me the very first time <laughs> I sold something I sent the wrong item uh, anyway let's get started these I almost kept those y'all okay you know me and pottery the only reason why I didn't keep them is because they're not my colors um, but they are absolutely gorgeous um, these are by earth art and this is um, the signature you can see right here of art they are I guess soup bowls or mixing bowls but they are absolutely stunning and I say that all the time I only pick pottery that I would keep for myself and it's only based on not only the glaze work on it which I think is absolutely fabulous on this but it's also the feel of the pottery this pottery and then this pottery okay this one is just excellent pottery the glaze is beautiful each one is a little bit different and I hope the blue shows just right I have a kitty who's interested in pottery here um, so this would be perfect for an udon type soup or a vegetable soup and one of the bowl is slightly bigger than the other see that they fit into one another uh, one is seven and a half I think and the other one is 775 or eight something like that but anyway love the glaze on those I'm the, I'm don't have my glasses on so I don't know if I'm in focus I hope I am. so that's the first item that's going on the Etsy shop if those had been in green and brown and sienna type colors I would have kept them for myself but no they're going in the shop okay next item these these are by Royal Crown I had a very hard time finding information about them um, they are stoneware mug coffee mug they're definitely 10 ounces um, they are glazed on the inside when I first saw them I knew they were um, vintage I wasn't sure if they were mid-century modern or if they were um, way after that in the likes of mid-century modern um, design and then I really really thought about it and I looked at the uh, um, 
glaze on it, the stoneware work, and I figured, you know what, I think they meant to look mid-century modern, but they're not. And I was right. These are from England. They are by Royal Crown, and they're from the 80s, which is still vintage, technically. I have four of those, so they're going to be sold as a set, and I think they are really cool if you're looking for that mid-century modern look definitely not farmhouse when i saw these i thought urban you know it's definitely not like farmhouse it's definitely urban so i can see that like in a uh, loft somewhere in hoboken new jersey or even new york city um they have a good feel the handle is very nice what i like about stoneware is that it really keeps things warm uh oh the clock Right, so those are uh, Royal Crown from England, um, stoneware mug, in the likes of mid-century modern, but they're more like the 80s. Next item I'm putting on the Etsy shop is this one. Um, I fell in love with this. You know me in China, right? And you know me with anything with gold and flowers, and if it's Nippon, I fall for it. This is technically a dipping dish. It's really a cracker and cheese um, dish. You put the crackers here at the bottom and you have your cheese or sour cream dip on top. Or you can have, um, you know, crackers and hummus, whatever. Very pretty. This is in excellent condition. It is Nippon. It is hand painted. It has a little bit of a relief on it, um, but it's all gold with this little band of yellow here. I don't know if you can uh, see it, but it's hand painted. Um, this is really neat. Now, do you have to use it for its intended purpose, which is cheese and crackers <laughs> or hummus and pita, whatever? Um, absolutely not. You can use this and repurpose it in a bathroom and put the rings in it and your hair things you know or necklaces here whatever you can repurpose this for any you know use you want you can even have that um, on a little dresser table and put little bubbles in it you know whatever I love that kind of stuff um, this transcends time because you can really use it for multi multi purposes and it's just so pretty and elegant um, really really nice I'm not sure what the pattern is called but that's all right next one did you know there is such a thing as bell collections I am now apparently people collect porcelain bells this one is very pretty this is by uh, Royal Terra and this is from um, Ireland and I believe it's got Celtic designs all around it it's from the 80s it's not super super vintage um, not expensive you know but for somebody who collects either Irish porcelain or uh, anything Irish this is very nice I actually like it. I like the design. I don't know anything about Irish and Celtic designs. I really don't. This is very foreign to me. Um, so I'm not sure what the symbols are on this. I can see this like Irish knots and things like that. That's the extent of my knowledge. So if you are Irish and you know about this stuff, you probably know what this means and maybe you're interested in it. I try to mix big items with small items so that way there's a little bit for everybody next one absolutely love this here's another one i would definitely keep for myself this is an l e smith amberina um candy jar and look at this thing it fits perfectly you see huh that works right isn't it cool all right so i did a little bit of research this is uh, the pattern is called uh star and moon um it was a very popular pattern back in the days this one is from 1950s it's beautiful glass and i did a little bit of research on amberina glass you can see that there's some orange in it and then there's some red all right so they, how do they do that first of all this was invented the uh, uh amberina color by itself was invented in 1883 um, I think or late Victorian time 
okay and how do they do it well they put just like my ruby red glasses the you know if you remember those they put colloidal gold in it and what happens is that it reacts to different temperatures so the more you heat it up the more it turns red okay so what they do is that they fire it once you get the orange color and then they fire it a second time in different parts like for instance they may take um the lid right and this one doesn't really show that because it's not a huge piece on larger piece you can really see the gradient from the orange to the red so but let's just say for instance that they do it from here so they they would have um the piece that holds it here and they want to keep this orange but they want this red they would just fire this area here and lift this one out of the fire and then they take it out and then they do it again and what would happen is that because the gold in it reacts differently uh, to temperature the color would change and it would stay permanently changed this one I think is absolutely gorgeous first of all it's the right size for candy so that way you can just put your M&Ms in it and um, you don't feel like you're gonna overeat them because if you have a huge bowl you know what happens right um, well at least for me uh, so this one super super pretty I think this looks really great on a buffet on a coffee table on a little side table why not put it in your bathroom again put little bubbles or whatever in it the colors it themselves are very fall so it's definitely the right time it's definitely the right time of the year to get something like this um not super expensive amberina is a highly collectible color a lot of people specialize either in that pattern or they would specialize in that particular color so there's a lot of people who collect amberina um, glass and amberina you know amber color okay got it right all right next this is a teeny bitty thing i found this at a new thrift shop that i discovered um what town i'm gonna say Passaic, uh new jersey i think it's saint john the apostle something like that they had a, uh, a thrift shop and um i found this and i love it it's a regular um you know japanese type ball probably the size of a ball you would find for matcha tea or uh, you know the green tea but this one is very special and i'm trying to show you the right color here i don't think the camera does it justice so you'll have to check on etsy there's more purple than what you see now if you are into dragonflies look at this thing isn't it cute so this is not commercial this is handmade it's signed at the bottom i'm not sure the signature is difficult to read i think it's mclean mclean or mclean but i think it's mclean um so it's a beautiful ball it has a very nice subtle though very subtle type of glaze on it and again, the best feature in that ball is the dragonfly at the bottom. I think this is really cute. And you don't have to use it for matcha, you can use it for other things. Again, everything I've tried to tell you is that everything can be repurposed for um, a different use. Okay, so I like that a lot. The next one is for dog lovers, and in particular, Great Danes. Um, I'm hoping I got the breed right this does look like a Great Dane you can't really see it can you I don't really have like a uh, dog background let's put it this way all right so I cannot find any information on this the only thing I can tell you that this is vintage you see the pipe hole right here if it's a small pipe hole it's obviously vintage I had one of those in the shop that was a German Shepherd um, probably last year or something like this and that flew out <laughs> so I guess I saw this one and it reminded me of that Shepherd and matter of fact I think it's the same company um, but I can't remember who they are I, maybe it's German I'm not sure so I really don't have much info on this uh, it's really really well made it's a very nice Great Dane I hope I have the right breed 
it might be a hound of sorts, but I think it's a Great Dane. There's only one little tiny defect on it, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you here, but it's definitely going to be on picture. There's a tiny, tiny, really tiny chip on its ear, but otherwise really cute. So if you collect dog figurines, or if you collect um, Great Danes, or if you have or breed Great Danes, I know it's getting really specific now, right? Um, this one's for you. It's got a cute face too. Really, really cute face. Next item, you probably saw those in one of my Day in the Life video. I love these and I wish I could keep them, but I have to sell them uh, only because I have too much. Too much stuff. Uh, milk glass, not just any milk glass, my favorite brand of milk glass, Westmoreland. I really believe that they make the best. Um, there's a lot of people who did milk glass. Fenton did milk glass, Ellie Smith did milk glass, um, you know. Most everybody back in the 50s and 60s did milk glass, but Westmoreland, you know a Westmoreland piece as soon as you put your hands on it because it has this heaviness to it. These are fabulous. These are um, coffee or tea cups. It's the grape pattern. The saucers, the saucers are super cute with the little scallop edges and again it's got that pressed design on it. Of course it says Westmoreland on both. I have six of those and I'm selling them as a lot. I'm not going to sell them individually. Um, you can do all sorts of things with those individually but I would prefer to keep the set together. And uh, yeah, so I have six very, very nice. They have a good feel. They are very heavy. Oh, I love milk glass. But I can't collect everything, can I? Um, just one more room. That's all I need. I just need one more room in this house and call it my pretty room and I just put all my collections in it. Scott doesn't need that. <laughs> this is something that I had before um, but only had the picture. And then this time around, in a different color, I found the picture and the sugar. This is Brendan Pottery um, Ironstone. Brendan Ironstone, really. This is from Ireland. This is from the 60s. I mean, the design is definitely mid-century. It's a creamer and a sugar. Very, very nice. Um, some crazing, some discoloration, not a lot. Really, you can barely see it if I show you on camera, right? But these are very nice. The design itself is so simple. Um, very masculine, but so simple. So even if you were just doing, uh, let's say you have an espresso machine, right? Even if you were just using this to just put the frothy milk in it, that would be perfect. So these are a creamer and a sugar bowl with its lid from Ireland, 1960s, definitely mid-century modern in terms of design um, you can see the logo here at the bottom and Brendan Ironstone Brendan Ironstone uh, from Ireland I like these they're not necessarily my style they're a little bit too modern for me but I do like these and this one has a really nice feel I was trying to figure out like how do you put this on does it go this way or this way and apparently it's this way all right the next item is by Hall Pottery um, United States and this pattern is called Creston and what do I have here I have a set a coffee set for two so I have two cups and saucers I was so happy when I saw this I have the creamer and I have the sugar I love these are oven, these are oven proof too I love the glaze on this Look at this glaze. Isn't it beautiful? When I see this, it reminds me of um, the espresso cups that you would see on the table at a cafe in Paris. It really does. It's got that, you know, like brasserie brown. And the cups are really big. And you see how there's an indentation here? So your cups really are not going anywhere. They feel really nice. They have a beautiful um, design on them. And I believe this pattern was very popular back in the 60s. 
um, so they stack very nicely so that's pretty cool if you want to um, let me put it here um, you know if you want to store them and then the creamer and the sugar are stunning too there's one little tiny 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 chip it's so small right here I don't even know if you can see it right here there's a tiny tiny chip on the lid but once you put the lid together you can't even see it um, so I like this a lot hull pottery I don't think I ever had any hull pottery um, for sale on the shop before so that'd be a first okay the last two items are the biggies <laughs> these are the big finds so all of this I've purchased um, for the purpose of reselling the other two items I'm going to show you are items that I actually found uh, trash picking yeah because sometimes I do trash picking the reason why I'm filming here today is because I wanted to show you this um, and if you're on Instagram you probably saw it this is a early American um, well not, I don't know about early American but it's definitely American brilliant uh, press glass I found this in the street it's not crystal okay it's pressed glass so maybe it is crystal but anyway doesn't matter because <laughs> I love it it's a rose bowl um, but the other one I wanted to show you is this and this is like a, a crystal um, vintage light you should see how old the plug is on this thing I, I think this is from the 30s um, I'm not kidding um, so yeah I do trash pick and some items I keep, like these two. I have another one of those lamps that I have to rewire. Um, the cable, the cord was cut, so I have to rewire the whole thing. And um, this one I'm keeping because there's a chip on it. It's super tiny, but I don't want to sell stuff. Crystal in particular, uh, if it's got a uh, chip. So I'm keeping those. But I do that. I go out every week uh, on trash day. I live in an area where people are very wasteful uh, <laughs> and very generous with their trash, let's just put it this way. And I have no shame whatsoever. I'll get out of the car, and uh, or unless Scott is driving, and I'll go and pick garbage and I find amazing stuff. So the next two items are from the curb. So if you watch my um, day in the life the other day, you probably saw me talk about this thing. You thought I was going to drop it, right? <laughs> yes, I found that on the street. Now, I said in the video that it was in perfect condition and I lied. Well, I didn't lie. I was um, not wearing my glasses <laughs> when I found it and when I talked about it. But after further review, uh, it is not in perfect condition. There is some um, little tiny bit of discoloration right here. You see that and obviously it's been baked in the oven so some of the gold has cracked a little bit I'm gonna to try to give you the best possible shot so I put the glasses to make sure I'm uh, can you see any you see the discoloration here right okay I don't know if you can see any defect on it maybe if I get oh here yeah, there's a little right here you see that okay so this is not going to be um, put on the Etsy shop with the maximum possible price I could get for it I will um, put it down a little bit this was very interesting as a find this is the Pyrex 1960 limited production and limited edition um, they only did one well they did more than one book but they only did they produced more than one ball, but they did only one pattern or one size in that ball. What I didn't know is that when they sold that ball, which is called, uh, it's a number 404 Pyrex ball in golden leaf, that's the design, it was issued Christmas 1960. When they issued it, they actually issued it with a Pyrex dome lid and it had a carrier tray. So those you'll find on the market for $150, $180 if they are, depending on the condition, but if they are as a complete set. 
Um, so I didn't know that. It had an actual lid with a knob and it had a metal carrier. This was basically a casserole. So I only found the bowl. The lady who put it out didn't have um, the lid for it and definitely didn't have the carrier. But I know that some of you have the lid and the carrier and I've been waiting for the bowl. It's a really hard find. It really is. You'll see it online at some crazy prices. Um, I don't think I'm gonna go above 80 on that one. Um, it's the price range between, yeah, maybe $70 if it's really in bad condition. And I've seen it at 180, okay, but that was the full set. So it's crazy how Pyrex is collected and how people will like trample over each other over Pyrex ball. Yes, they do. You remember my story when I went to that um, big church yard sale and that lady was trying to get the Pyrex balls out of my hand? She did. It's a wild world out there, I'm telling you. But then again, I may get like that if I saw a, uh, a Madonna, a Hager Madonna at the store. Anyway, the big piece, this last one I want to talk about and then I'll let you go because I know I can yap. I can't believe I found this on the street. I don't know what this lady was thinking, um, but very obviously she, you know, sometimes people just don't want to be bothered with doing research or they don't want to be bothered with trying to sell on the Facebook marketplace. They don't want the stuff, so they just get it out. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video because I needed to show you the size of it. I had to do research on that because I had no idea what it was. <laughs> Okay, I learned so much doing this sexy shop. Okay, this is the size of it. You see how big this thing is? Okay, I just want to make sure you know that because there's some people who've already asked me about it. I want you to understand this thing is going to be heavy in a huge box. <laughs> okay, uh, it doesn't have a bottom. It's rounded, but it does have this piece here. So you basically, don't break it, Sophia. Okay. You basically uh, like this and it will stay, you see, not, okay, I don't want to break it, I really don't. All right. uh, it's called a water jug and I had to do research on it. It's called Barro Negro Pottery. It's from Oaxaca, Mexico. Um, that particular area of Mexico has what they call a black clay. Right here in New Jersey, there's an area um, that has black soil. Um, it's the weirdest thing. I mean, we're talking like jet black. So I'm assuming that it's the same thing over there. And what they do is that they make pottery out of it. Um, but in 1950, there was a lady named Doña Rosa Real, uh, who was one of the potters in, you know, that area, who invented um, the patina that you see here. She actually started polishing the potteries with a metallic um, type glaze. And once that goes into the kiln and gets fired up, you end up with this semi-matte kind of satin. Um, it's not very metallic. You won't see any shimmer in it, right? So it's like a, a gun metal type. Um, look to it and then there's some you see these these are burnish marks uh, so it's typical of you know uh, the metal that would be in there in that particular glaze um, there's two holes here two vent holes for the handle which is indicative to me that this is really good stuff okay this is good stuff um, so the handle was you know molded with it it's again it doesn't have a bottom so you either hang it or you have to put it on this base all right so since um the lady invented that technique in 1950 we're gonna say that this is post mid-century modern it's probably from the um based on the other stuff i got from this lady it's probably from the 60s maybe early 70s uh barrel negro um pottery and it is signed if I can find it right here it's signed RG 
and I was freaking out thinking like oh my god is this Rosa is this Donia Rosa but no because her last name was Real so this could be I don't know Raul Gutierrez <laughs> whatever if that even is a Mexican name I'm not sure um, but anyway this thing uh, I've priced it out online um, I'm not going to put it up for sale for that price. You you guys know me better. I, I don't do that. But this is basically almost $400 online um, as a vintage Bauer Negro pottery. So now they still make Bauer Negro stuff. Um, they're very well known for the animal figures. You know, they'll do uh, uh, frogs, they'll do uh, uh, leopards, they'll do all sorts of um, animals that you would see in uh, Mexico, you know, birds, things like this. Um, and then with the big craze with uh, um, the Day of the Dead, past 10 years, I guess, um, they've been doing a lot of skulls and things like that. But this, this thing here is amazing. This is amazing. It's really heavy. I just want to let you know ahead of time, this thing is heavy. <laughs> And the box is going to be huge, all right? Um, but it's in excellent, brand new, pristine um, condition. I turned it around in every possible way. There's not a scratch, there's not a crack, there's not a uh, hairline. Um, it was, it's beautiful. Barrow Negro pottery. I never heard of that before. I, that's one of the reasons why I'm telling you why I love doing the sexy thing is because I get to learn a lot of stuff. Oh, and then it's etched. The one I saw online that was almost $400 was not etched. So imagine how much this one would go for. Uh, I hope you can see the design on it. Anyway, if you have a southwestern house, if you have um, I don't know about a uh, primitive, even though the black would go with it, but that's, I don't know if it would go with it, but there's so many different um, decor that you can incorporate this in. It just doesn't fit in mine. That's one of the reasons why I'm not keeping it uh, plus I, to support the family. So you put it this way, uh, anywhere you want, in your house, um, preferably away from cats and shaky floors because I would be concerned this thing would come off even though it was on my buffet for a while and nothing happened but can you imagine if you break this now nah, no bueno <laughs> no bueno this is quite a fine I can't believe I found that on the street but anyway <sighs> people I'm telling you sometimes I get really upset like I'm, I'm driving around and I'm thinking okay so today the day I'm gonna find grandma's china if I find grandma's china in, in a bunch of boxes, which I found pieces, bits and things like that, but if I ever find an entire set of china in a box, I'm going to knock on that lady's door. I'm going to be like, what are you thinking? Like, really? <laughs> I'm going to throw away grandma's china. Um, but there's people who just don't care. Like, everybody is in that minimalist craze, okay? Okay, let me put this back here. It should not be in danger over there. God, I love this. Isn't it neat? It's neat. I really like this. Um, what a find. Okay, so these are the items that I'm putting on Etsy. Um, and again, these are the items that I found on the street. I think that you guys like that when I tell you what I found, right, um, in the street. I wanted to show you what the chip is. You know, there's people who specialize in getting rid of this. It's just right here. It's just a little, it's super tiny. Um, and you can get it to a specialist and he will zzz, what do you call shave it off but I think it looks great right here you probably can't see it too much right now because of the daylight but at night all of the light which is very dim from my boudoir uh, lamp reflects into the diamond pattern and the brilliant cut of this vase um, ball rose ball and I'm over there sitting on the opposite side just gazing at it cuz I like it and that's what I do I gaze at my pretties nothing wrong with that <laughs> and I like to share them with you and I have to tell you 
as exhausting as the Etsy shop is because now see all of this has been taken in pictures already it's all been washed now I gotta wrap it all and box it and weigh it and go online and do the description I love it if I could do this full time as a living I would because I learn so much and I get to touch stuff and I'm sick like that so anyway that's the story uh, guys thank you for watching I will see you, uh, I'm not sure when, um, but I'm on vacation coming up, staycation in September from the 10th to the 16th, so hopefully there'll be more video. Thank you for watching, don't forget to check my Etsy shop down below and I will see you next time, bye! Hey, it's me and guess what? Click that thumbs up if you really like this video, thumbs down twice if you didn't. You can also share my video if you really, really liked it or save it to watch later. Also, you can subscribe to my channel, but don't forget to click that bell button so you are always notified when I post a new video. Thank you for watching.